morning everybody this is data pioneer with the Linux Unix tech channel and today I thought I'd take a look at a an application a docker application that I've installed and I've started using it I really like it it's called fresh RSS uh, and RSS if you're not familiar with it uh, stands for really simple syndication it's a news feed aggregator if you're familiar with those and so let's take a look at it right after this Okay, I'm back uh, out on my Farron OS Linux desktop here, and uh, let's get on over to uh, my Brave web browser. Um, and if you haven't used the Brave web browser, by the way, I'll do a, a video on this one uh, at some point. This is a great, absolutely great web browser for protecting your privacy and uh, keeping trackers down, um, blocking ads. For instance, here I've got 45,446 ads already blocked here. so. Save me 38 minutes uh, in the browser uh, by doing that. Okay, so let's let's take a look at uh, Fresh RSS. And um, rather than the typical fashion of installing an application in Linux and using it, setting it up that way, I've gone a different route. Let me show you what I've done here. I have an application here called Heimdall, which I installed as a Docker image uh, in the browser, and it is accessible on my Raspberry Pi Model 4. I just recently purchased this Raspberry Pi. It's got 4 gigs of RAM, so it's a very beefy uh, Pi. Now I understand they do have an 8 gig version, so you might want to check that out on Amazon or uh, wherever you buy your, your computer products. But uh, it is a single board computer, Raspberry Pi. I love it. I have two of them now. I've got a Model 3B Plus and I've got a 4. And so the Model 4 is what I use for this particular uh, video that I'm doing today. It's out running 24-7. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm on my Linux machine. I'm not on the Raspberry Pi. But I can touch the Heimdall application uh, through the browser, which is a Docker app, as I mentioned, by going to the web, uh, website, which is an IP address for the Pi, which is http colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.125 and it uh, sees that on port 3225 so this is Heimdall. The reason I take you out there is I have a button here on it and I, I've set this up really as my home page. Um, I can um, go ahead and click this home button and that takes you out to Heimdall. Uh, so if I close Heimdall here and if I close it here and then click on the home button uh, it will actually take me out to Heimdall here. Okay, so um, what I can do is click this button right here, and that takes me out to my fresh RSS. I've already logged into it, so I don't need to log into it again. This is a news aggregator, and I have a couple of uh, uh, RSS feeds set up in it. And if I click that button, um, here I've got a mainstream, I've got tech news primarily right now, and I've got PC World, and I've got The Verge, and I'll add a third one here. But let me, uh, let me walk you through the process of what I did, uh, basically to set up, uh, not Heimdall, but to set up RSS, uh, fresh RSS. All right, so I have a, an application here um, out on the Pi. It's called Open Media Vault, and this is the control panel for it. Here's the general settings for um, Open Media Vault. And what Open Media Vault is, it is a solution for setting up what's called a network attached storage on your, um, on your computer. Now, on the Raspberry Pi, I have Open Media Vault installed, and I have two one terabyte uh, spinning drives, um, Western Digital and a Barracuda drive, and they're in an enclosure attached USB 3.0. And um, I have, if you go down to shared folders, I have uh, these two shares set up, one called File Store Vol 1, one's called File Store Vol 2. And this is the uh, Western Digital Drive, and this one is the Barracuda Drive. They each have one terabyte of storage. 
Uh, and what I do is I set up uh, what's called an SMB CIFS or uh, server message block uh, common internet file system share. Uh, if I click on shares here, and I have the file store one, file store two, and then I have one called config, and we'll talk about the importance of config here in a moment. Uh, but if I come down to uh, here in my Linux machine and go out to uh, uh, close this real quick and go out to um, get back to it let's go out to the uh, data pioneers uh, directories here on the system and if I go down to network I already have this one set up um, but if I come out to network and double click on CIFS here you can see that I have the config folder which is the share and that's what the symbol is and then I have a file store vol1 share and a file store vol2 share. If I click the double click rather the vol1, it opens up this uh, arrangement here of documents, downloads, music. These are folders that I set up uh, in that. And if I go back to network and double click that again and go to file uh, vol file uh, vol2. Um, then it asks me for using my password, but I've set these up in uh, Open Media Vault to be accessible by anyone, and so I can just click connect and it opens it right up. Okay, all right. So that's what I've done with uh, Open Media Vault. Uh, so I've set that up on the Pi, and then this has allowed me to create what's called Docker applications in another uh, application that I've set up on the Pi called Portainer. So if I go out here to uh, this tab. It brings up uh, Portainer, and Portainer is with Portainer.io. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to add stacks in Portainer and create what's called containers here that are running uh, in the system on the Pi uh, via images that you grab here from uh, LinuxServer.io, and I'll show you that here momentarily. So let's go back out to the stack. Now you see I have one stack called Fresh RSS. I have one called Heimdall, which supports that application right there. And I have one called Qubit Torrent, which I have a Qubit Torrent client. Um, so I can download a torrent file from the web, which is a small file. And then I can put it in my Qubit Torrent server running um, on uh, a, a particular port. I can't recall the exact port uh, that it's set up on, but if I go to the editor, uh, it's set up on port 6881 and 8081. Okay, all right. So let's go back out. And then I have recently installed an application in um, Docker uh, called Wireshark, and so I have a Wireshark application that I can also pull up via the web. And so this has opened up a whole new arena for me, uh, a way to uh, access applications via my web browser, so that I don't have to necessarily install them in Linux. Um, and uh, and the Raspberry Pi uh, Model 4, by the way, is running a Raspbian Lite uh, operating system, which is based on Debian Linux. So it is still running in Linux. All right, so if I go up to Fresh RSS and if I click on this, uh, the way this is installed is I go out to LinuxServer.io. Let me go there first. Here's the website that I grabbed the images from. And if I click on the Images tab, it takes me here to this particular page. And if I go to Fresh RSS and pull that up, uh, just start typing here. Here's the Fresh RSS uh, stack image. Um, and if I click on it, then it brings up this page here. And I can select the uh, Linux server Fresh RSS link there. And it takes me out to Docker Hub. To grab the Docker image, and so here it is at LinuxServer.io. Uh, and if I scroll down the page, here's Fresh RSS. It tells you a little bit about it. Uh, it tells you who, what the supported architectures are for it. And the one I'm interested in is the ARM64 and the ARMHF specifically, because uh, that's what my Raspberry Pi runs on. It runs on either the ARM64 or the ARMHF. I believe mine's a 64-bit Pi, so it'll run on the ARM64. Uh, it's got four gigs of RAM, so 
if I don't see that, then I know I can't install uh, a Docker image as a stack uh, in Portainer uh, on this system uh, the way I'm going to show you here. So if I come down the page, here's the Docker section, and that's what you would actually grab and install in Linux at the terminal. But I want to come down a little bit further to the Docker Compose. And what I do here is I grab this part of it, okay, and I right click and copy that. All right, and, and then I come up and go back to Portainer, and I this is empty when I do it, and I select here, if, if I were doing this from scratch, I would hit Add Stack, and then I would come up and put in Fresh RSS. I'm not going to do this because I've already got it installed. I would come down and I would right click here, and I would uh, paste that in, okay? Then there's a couple of configuration changes I need to make. Um, one of those is usually the first seven lines of your Docker image uh, in the stack when you're creating it, you can ignore. And in this case, I certainly can do that. Uh, there's nothing I need to change here. The first change I need to make is in the PUID and the PGID values that are here. Uh, these values don't work uh, here, and the reason for that is this is the generic value that's set up in the Docker image, and you have to change it per your own setup. Now, uh, I have logged in as admin here in Portainer, which, which is the administrator. And so what I need to do is I need to go out to uh, the terminal, and or actually not the terminal, but to the desktop, and I need to pull up an application that I have installed here called PuTTY. And what PuTTY lets me do is it lets me SSH into my Pi, uh, and so that address again is 192.168.1.125 and if I click open it opens up this uh, putty window and I'm going to go and let's see if I can bring up the uh, size here uh, give me one second no nope, it won't let me do that okay so I'm not going to be able to do that uh, to increase the size of that so hopefully you can see it all right so what I'm going to do I'm going to log in as root and put in roots password and uh, you may not be able to see this but I will go ahead and tell you that when I type in the ID admin command and the reason I put ID admin admin is the username for portainer and so what I'm issuing here, the ID admin, I'm logged in as root, so I don't need to put sudo in front of it. It's looking up the uh, ID for this particular username, okay, on the system. And so if I enter, it says that the UID is 998, which is the admin, and the GID is 100, which is the user, and then the group is 100. These are the only two I really need to worry about here. This is the PID and the G. Uh, P G I D here, all right. And so let me go ahead and log out or get out of this. Let's go back over and what I need to do here then is change the P U I D to nine nine eight. All right, and then the P G I D was that second value, which is one hundred. Um, for the time zone. Uh, let me go ahead and highlight that. And if you don't know what your time zone is, I happen to know what mine is, but I will just show you that you can find that out very easily by going back to your Open Media Vault once you get that installed, and um, and go up to General Settings, and then go to um, Date and Time, or actually, uh, and here it is. And so it's America, New York for me. Let me right click and copy that, and then come back over to Portainer and right click and paste that into this location and so America New York is my time zone and then the uh, last thing I need to add here uh, is the path to the volume and so I'm going to highlight this part of the information up to the colon but not taking and including the colon so this is path to data and to get that I come back to my open media vault application and I come down to my shared folders tab or option and I have a config file and if you notice I go back out here to Portainer it's looking for config alright so I have one set up here 
for everything I do in Portainer. So this is the config and it's a share out on Store Vault 2. And here is the location, the absolute path to that particular config file. That's where I'm going to install this Docker image as a uh, deployed stack image. All right. And so what I'm going to do is right click on that and inspect opens up this window here and I'm going to come over and this is the location of where it is. I'm going to right click and edit the text on that and then right click and copy that location and then close that and then come up to Portainer and then right click and paste that in and so that replaces that value there for the path and then at the end of the trailing end of config here I'm going to right click and type in uh, fresh RSS. Okay, it's going to create a fresh RSS folder underneath config and then put the information that it needs to once I deploy the stack. Now if I come down, this is all I need to do here, if I come down, if I click deploy the stack and wait about two minutes or it could take a little longer than that, it's going to come up and say that it's uh, uh, installed properly and ready to use. I can come out and so if I let me go back to the actual stack where I have it uh, if I click on the link this is what it'll look like when it's when it's actually uh, deployed and it'll say that it's running and I can come over to a quick action and I can hit this logs and I can come down and I can see that it is done okay if I don't see done or something like listening on a certain port if it's one of the uh, applications that listens sits and listens on a port for incoming traffic then I know it's not done uh, and uh, you won't be able to access it but this is completed alright so this is the container for it uh, here's the image that was grabbed so if I come over to fresh RSS here's the image here's the SHA-256 hash on that image okay and that was what was used here from Linux server um, dot uh, IO in the docker compose alright so uh, to get to that I come back to Heimdall and um, let me actually let me get out of that let me come back to Heimdall and I have a Heimdall set up it's a bookmarker for your uh, docker images and your uh, docker apps um, accessible via the web which is very nice and you have to set up Heimdall the same way that you set up fresh RSS in Portainer I have it actually set up uh, I'll show you right here okay so if I come back to Heimdall and if I come over to fresh RSS and I click it uh, it was already logged in uh, so I don't need to re-log in again but if I come out um, see if I can uh, I don't need to log in again that's okay I'm not gonna worry about doing that um, I can log in easily I've got a uh, robo form that lets me do that but anyway, I have uh, fresh RSS set up with uh, two feeds already that I showed you uh, under Tech News. Just started playing with this. Uh, ARS Technica, okay, uh, which has some news feed articles that have come up already. Um, here's one dangerous SHA1 crypto function will die. What I've done here is uh, this pulls up my news from. Uh, ARS Technica and also from uh, uh, the other site that I have set up right now PC World I believe um, it pulls it up automatically for me so that I don't have to go out on the web and go out to ARS Technica's website and pull my news down manually it, this brings it to me so that I can um, and it does it on a schedule so I can and look at all my my mail here my news rather uh, all at one place uh, if I want to look at this article in more in depth, I can just click on the link and that opens up the full article on ARS Technica. I can read the full article here. Uh, and then when I'm done, I can close it and go back. Another thing I can do is I can, uh, if this is uh, not easy to read, a lot of people don't like um, the white background and etc. etc. I can actually go up to a, a, a uh, an extension that I have set up in my Brave web browser call reader view and I can click that and it actually renders that in a much nicer for me anyway much nicer appearance um, so that I can read this I'm gonna go ahead and close that all right okay so I'm gonna go ahead and add a third RSS feed to this to show you uh, how to do that uh, RSS feed by the way is not the only 
news aggregator I've ever played with. Uh, there's another one called Tiny Tiny RSS. I did have that installed on my Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus for a while, uh, but I've since uh, eliminated it. Uh, and, and I wanted to use a fresh RSS on the new Pi, and it, I like this one better, actually. All right, so set up a new uh, feed. I'm going to come out to a website um, called kadaza.com, and I'm going to click on the news link here, and I believe I'm already on it. Yeah, and I'm going to go out to ZDNet, and here's ZDNet. I want to pull that one in so that I can get ZDNet articles as well. So let's come down to the bottom of the page, and there should be an RSS feeds. There it is. If I click that link, I want the uh, RSS feeds to be the latest ZDNet news. So I'm going to come over to RSS and click it. And I don't really need to concern myself with the, this is called extensible markup language. Okay, this is what it's based on. But I can come up to the top here to the address bar, right click and copy, or select all and then copy right click and copy that information and uh, a new RSS like ZDNet that I want to add here uh, just come across the top here and select this normal view and that brings up this window here for subscription management if I click on that uh, it'll take me out to the subscription management field for adding an RSS feed so I've already right clicked and copied that RSS feed XML file if I right click and paste that into uh, this feed window and hit it add what that's going to do is uh, said it could not be added check the logs okay so for some reason that one could not be added I'm not sure why let's go back out to ZDNet and make sure we grab the file properly copy that again and let's go back out here adding a feed it should let us do that I think I grabbed the wrong file alright so yeah there we go it brings up uh, this window for information. It's the latest news. Um, I can put in what I want here, uh, ZDNet. So let me just come to the front of it. ZDNet latest news. And here's the description here. There's the website. There's the feed. The category I'm going to select is new tech news, and I can add new categories as well. But I'm just not going to do that now. I can do that through here in this window here. Uh, on the other page by adding a new category. For instance, I might want to add, uh, instead of tech news, I might want to add uh, world news or entertainment or marketing or finance or something like that. All right, so if I click Submit, then that's going to uh, submit that to uh, the program and to Fresh RSS. And then let me go ahead and cancel that uh, and get back out to the window here. And so now let's go back out to Fresh RSS. And if I click this button, it should take me and I should see ZDNet latest news coming out here. So here's ZDNet latest news. And then here's the latest news from ZDNet. And during the day, this will populate uh, more and more, obviously. And so here's an article, Windows 10 2004. Uh, if you click on that, there we go. And so we're out on ZDNet and we're looking at the news there. But we can read it directly. Uh, from within here if we want uh, in this particular case you have to click on the link to get the full story okay but going back to fresh RSS um, let me click on go back up to the top and if I come over here um, if I go back actually I didn't want to do that um, go to mainstream if I come over here to this button pull this down uh, clicking this uh, wheel um, you have various things like reading display archiving sharing so under display you uh, have an interface here for the language that you want to select you've got several that you can select from mine's English of course uh, the theme that you want to use I'm using the the standard theme engine here you can change that to uh, another theme if you like uh, for content width, I've got medium selected. You can do thin, medium, large, or no limit. So, for instance, if you're looking at an RSS feed, um, uh, an actual article, if you have it set to no limit, then whatever the size of that is, that's what you'll see in the window. Uh, for article icons, you can select various options here for article titles, sharing, authors, date, publication. 
um, and, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, for reading, you can tell it to pull up the 20 top articles uh, divided by two in the reading view. Uh, sort order newest to newest first, or you can say oldest first. I'm going to do newest first. I like my articles to come up newest article first. Uh, default view is the uh, regular reading view. You can do normal view or global. Okay. Um, articles to display. Uh, you can adjust those with the tick marks here in the buttons down below. I'm not going to go through all of this. It's a lot to go through. For archiving here, you can archive your articles um, in various ways. Um, do not automatically refresh for one hour more often than that. So no more often than one hour uh, to refresh. You can select uh, sooner than that. Uh, I think 20 minutes is the earliest. And you can say don't refresh your articles for six hours or eight hours, 18 hours. Uh, just, just, you know, it's a matter of how you, it's your preference, how you want to do it. I usually like it to do it every hour, so I'm going to select one hour. Um, and then come down for maintenance here. Um, you have 171 articles. You can purge all of them here, or you can optimize the database, uh, etc. cetera, uh, in this interface here. You can share your articles here with various uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, via email, um, LinkedIn, you name it, okay? Uh, so you can do that there, and then you just submit it. You've got uh, shortcuts, uh, user queries, a profile. This is for developing your profile, Mind State of Pioneer. Uh, you have extensions that you can use here that you can select from. Uh, and then under the administration section, you have a system configuration, manage users. Uh, so you can have more than one user. Uh, authentication methods that you might want to use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so let's go back out to the uh, fresh RSS news aggregator. Let's go back out to, let's say, The Verge. And so this is fresh RSS, guys. I mean, I highly recommend you take a look at this. Um, like I said, I was using another news aggregator prior to this, and I liked it, but uh, this is much better. I like the look of this, the feel for it. Uh, I like the way it presents uh, news to me. And the fact that you can install this in a Portainer, uh, Docker image in Portainer here, and set it up this way is just wonderful. Uh, it's just one of many uh, Docker images that you can set up uh, in Portainer and uh, Open Media Vault once you get that set up in your Raspberry Pi. Um, so this has been uh, Data Pioneer uh, with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a nice day and take care. Bye-bye.